And divisions are soon to be a thing of the past in conferences, but we still have them for at least one more year in spot. So there's actually a great debate to be had on which division is the best one right now in all of college football. Now to us, the two front runners are the SEC West, which boasts Alabama, LSU, Auburn, Arkansas, Mississippi State, Ole Miss, and Texas A&M. And then of course the Big Ten East, which holds Michigan, Ohio State, Penn State, Maryland, Michigan State, Indiana, and Rutgers. Now, to find out which division is the best, I've put together some standards, or what I call the standards of division. Now, let's start with the first identifier, standard one, legitimate championship contenders. Now, while division teams within conferences have to play each other, you still must separate each one of them to be able to grade them. Now, to me, the Big Ten East has three teams that could legitimately challenge for a title if everything goes well, especially if Drew Aller is the dude that some think he can be at Penn State. They have a good enough team, team around them to make a run. Now, obviously, Michigan and Ohio State are in this category as well, so that gives them three. Now, in the SEC West, right now I think you have to say there's only two legitimate national title contenders in Alabama and LSU. So score the first category for the Big Ten East. Could be on upset alert here. Now, the second standard is division depth from top to bottom. Now, while the Big Ten East does have three title contenders, in my opinion, they also have two teams that are going to be in the bottom of the barrel for college football nationally in Rutgers and Indiana. Sorry, Tom Allen. And to be honest, Michigan State may end up being in a lot of trouble as well, whereas the SEC West has more teams with potential for good years and I don't think any of them are going to be the lowest of the low. I'm not saying every team in that division will be good, but I don't think the SEC West has a Rutgers or an Indiana. So score a category for the SEC West and knots us up at one. Now the final standard and the tiebreaker is what I call middle-middle. And no, I'm not talking about where the Yankees pitching staff leaves most of their fastballs, but instead, which teams you would rather play where we think they're going to finish in the middle of the pack, right? So the middle of the division. So it becomes which of these teams and which grouping you would rather go up against. Would you rather go up against the grouping of Penn State, Maryland, and Michigan State, or choose three out of Mississippi State, Arkansas, Ole Miss, Auburn, or Texas A&M? Now, even though, like I said, Penn State will probably be the best out of each one of the groupings I just listed, I would much rather have to play Maryland and Michigan State as opposed to any of the SEC West teams that I just offered up, especially on the road. Now, we have a much better idea of what the bottom of the Big East, uh, the Big Ten East will look like. So getting a true middle-middle projection is tough for the SEC West, but I think most knowledgeable fans will agree with me. You gotta go with the Western division in this final standard. So that gives the SEC West two out of three wins in the standard categories. Now, I'm going to go with the West, but it's really close. And our 2023 national champ could come out from multiple teams out of each one of these groups. Now, either way, we don't have to deal with the division much longer, and that's a win for all of college football in my book when it comes down to scheduling formats. So tell us in the comments and in the chat, which division are you taking as the best in college football? If you have a great product, and you need a great company to help sell that product or sell merch or, or really just you need a commerce platform. Our friends are over at Shop, uh, Shopify, they're the all-in-one. They're like the SEC and the Big Ten combined for starting, running, and growing your business. And when you hear this noise, guess what? You just bought a ticket to go with Jeff Bezos in space or the guy that owns Virgin Mobile because you're rich. All right, <laughs> Shopify makes it easy to sell to anyone from anywhere. Because right, look, we I have people that hit me up all the time. Hey, I'm starting a podcast. Hey, I'm starting a business. I need help selling this thing, getting the word out, branding. Shopify, I'm just, I'm telling you, it is the most efficient route. We always say work smarter, not harder. Shopify encapsulates that. You can customize your online store to your brand, helps you discover new customers, build relationships, and create diehard fans. And from a, a nuts and bolts standpoint, it helps you manage inventory, track payments, view real-time business insights from a single place. It is a dual threat quarterback in one. It is Michael Vick with Drew Brees. It is Dan Marino with Lamar Jackson. It is the total complete package. Wow. Minus the baggage. Wow. All right. You know me. That's okay? a combo, man. You know me. I'm not just over here gassing up somebody for no reason. So sign up 
for a one, uh, $1 per month trial at shopify.com slash crane, that's C-R-A-I-N, not spelled like the bird, all lowercase, that's shopify.com slash crane to start selling online today, shopify.com slash crane. Hit, the, hit that sound again, David. Okay. Shopify. I'm going to bring in mm. former Big Ten East division roamer, David Cohn, from Michigan quarterback, my brother, former Western State Colorado wide receiver, Blaine Crane. Guys, some people, you could throw the SEC East in here as well. I, I, I think you can make a legitimate argument for it's them, especially if Tennessee, you know, if Joe Milton can come through. But I think, I think it's the overall depth in the middle of the pack mm-hmm. that gives it. If there was, there was no Rutgers and no Indiana, and say maybe there was an Illinois and a, and a Maryland, mm-hmm. you know, or, or maybe even an Illinois and an Indiana, I think it could be a much different argument, but I got to go SEC West here. I agree with you. What a big win for the Big Ten East, though, to even be involved in this conversation. I mean, no doubt. SEC West has been the standard bearer for divisions for at least the last decade, decade and a half. Um, I do agree with you. Here's the way I was thinking about it. If you were just going to pull a team out of a hat and said, this is the team that you have to go play a football game with, I'll take my chances with the SEC West. I'll take my chances with pulling out the bottom of the barrel from that division last year, like Texas A&M or Auburn. Give me those football teams if I'm going in to play play a game. But uh, the top of this Big Ten East is very impressive now, and and largely due to Michigan figuring it out and Jim Harbaugh figuring it out the last couple years. I mean, he's finally gotten it, finally gotten in a groove there in Ann Arbor, because for a while we just thought, hey, the Buckeyes are just going to run away and be the gold standard in this conference for the rest of time. So, you know, kudos to him. And then with what James Franklin has been able to do at Penn State, you know, we were looking at it like, man, did James Franklin really deserve all that hype when the conversation was, oh, he's going to be the next head coach at USC, right? He may leave Penn State. Well, what he was able to do last season was very impressive. And now this roster is going to be incredible. And, you, and you're bringing in a new quarterback who you've been singing his praises for a, a long time. Got a lot of time, potential, man. A lot of potential. Uh, you know, you're going to get Michigan at home this year. The, the schedule looks good. So I don't know. The the top of that division is very impressive. And, you know, they can't lift the bottom of the division. You no. can't, you know, you're not going to be able to bring up Rutgers and, and, and Indiana. Those teams have to figure it out for themselves. But the biggest feather in the cap for the Big Ten East will be if you can go win the national championship. That's the last That's step. That's the biggest step yeah. for you. And it kind of, you know, the way Ohio State ran that division kind of feels like the way Georgia's running the SEC East right now. It was basically mm-hmm. a foregone conclusion. So, I, I agree with you 100%. What Michigan has done, you paired them with Penn State. I mean, you are not going to find a better division with that's top heavier than the Big Ten East, those three teams. There's and, not a better division and it in, just so happens, in that category. And it just so happens Michigan State is down right now. If we were yeah. talking about the Michigan State a couple years ago in Mel, in Mel Tucker's year when he had Kenneth Walker or even the Mark D'Antonio years— with, with the three teams we just talked about, plus a tough Michigan State team, that if they can figure it out and get back to where they've been, that's a heck of a division. Yeah, we're not too far removed from Indiana being relevant, too. The well, Rutgers Michael Penix as Penix well. Jr. The Michael Penix Jr. years they had, yeah. you know, and you got Loxley at Maryland. So, look, I, they, they can really figure it out, even though we're going away from divisions. But yeah, still, yeah. They, there's good football over there. I mean, it's a real conversation, but, I mean, you have to go to the SEC West, right? Even with the criteria you laid out, and from a draft standpoint, I mean, just the SEC— Mostly rolls everybody when it comes to the draft, but the top. Th- I mean, when it, the top three best teams. I mean, right now compared to the SEC. I mean, you have LSU, you have Bama. We don't know about Bama this year. Ohio State and Michigan right now are their playoff team bound. I mean, this. I mean, who do you see Ohio State realistically losing to other than Michigan? And they're going to walk in and be a dog against. I, I think I. I- would not be shocked if they lost at Wisconsin. I really wouldn't. I, I feel like Dame. they're going to be I too athletic. Notre Dame. I wouldn't be shocked if Notre Dame beat them. I wouldn't take them, but I wouldn't be shocked. Well, they'll be favored in all these games. Oh well, 100%. yeah, it's, it's Ohio and, State. And, like I know we always away. question. Well, at least this year we're questioning Ohio State's what quarterback. But man, they always got one. I mean, look, I mean, look at the guy who's starting right now in Texas. Yeah, well, you got one too. You don't. I yeah, mean, look so, at Clemson. We we're looking at it. like eventually we see this and. and at every school, you have this run of quarterbacks. We're asking ourselves this question about Alabama right now. You know, you, you look at the run of quarterbacks Ohio State's had. It's been incredible. But Clemson had an incredible run of quarterbacks, kind of hit a little bit of a speed bump with DJU. You look at Alabama, have had an incredible run of quarterbacks. I mean, you, you can go back even further, I think, for Alabama than you can in some of these other schools. And it's a question right now. Georgia, I don't think you can make that same argument. They haven't had the same run of quarterbacks in, you know, consecutively that these other schools have had. But it's it's a high-class problem 
when you're replacing a top five pick, it seems like almost every two or three years at quarterback with another big time player. And, you know, if you look at, at you bring up the Texas point with Quinn Ewers, who was at Ohio, Ohio State. State. Yeah. yeah. And like, and one thing you can never question with Ohio, Ohio State that you can question with Clemson, and how you could even question Alabama last year, skill position. Yeah. Ohio State, just as they have quarterback, like their skill positions are top tier with anybody. And that can get you away, get you to get away with a lot of things when it comes to college football. You can have a, a above average quarterback, extremely good at the skill position, and find yourself with one loss during the season, walk into the Without playoff. Without a doubt. And I mean, you had two NFL tackles and an NFL center. I mean, Ohio State up front's not, not terrible. What, where I think, what, where I think the, the meat of this argument lies is it, not even, it's not even at the top. Right? I don't think that's an argument. I, I don't think anybody will sit here and legitimately be able to make a rational argument there, there are more teams in the SEC West that can win a net. We're not talking about SEC overall versus Big Ten because I think if you look at Big Ten versus the SEC, there's three legitimate teams in the SEC that, that have a chance to win the natty, in my opinion, because you got to add Georgia in that mix. Mm -hmm. Then in the Big Ten, I don't think there's a Big Ten West team that can win the national championship. I, I agree. I agree. Uh, so the meat, the meat's in the middle, right? Like a hamburger. Yeah, no, exactly. And that's why I like the, I, I like framing this as if you were to just pull a name out of a hat, like a team out of a hat, and that's the one you have to go to battle with. That's because that way, you know, you don't know what you're going to get. And I would take the SEC West in yeah. that scenario. Well, but both divisions, they're the product on the field. It's a fantastic product. Hey, YouTube, what's up? We're almost to 100K. So make sure you subscribe. And if you want to be part of the Daily Wire Fantasy Football League. That's right. You can be in the same Fantasy Football League as Ben Shapiro, and we're only giving away one spot. And you'll be here live for the draft, or be live at the draft. You have to be subscribed, so do it now.